You know, I try to avoid hyperbole on this channel. That's because it's easy, it's cheap, anybody could do that, and I'm far too talented to rely on the tactics that everybody else uses. But the thing is, some stories are worthy of hyperbolic tones. Some stories are worthy of being called the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Because in today's tale, we're going to talk about a fight between two 13-year-olds that seemed like it was normal on its surface, just kids fighting. Robert Baratheon taught us that that's normal. That and it, children fight. It's over. However, this seemingly normal fight between two girls became incredibly unnormal when one of them actually pulled out a knife and stabbed the other one in a viral video that I'm sure you guys have seen on the internet because it went viral on Twitter, on all the social medias. And it ended up becoming even more abnormal because Gascon, the district attorney in name only for Los Angeles, decided to undercharge this attempted murderer. And the consequences of that are so absurd that we're going to have to do a deep dive into this case. Now, before we get into that, before I explain this whole case to you, this video is sponsored. So I'm going to have to toss it to the sponsor. But be sure to come back here on the other side because you're not going to believe the twists and turns in this case. If you've noticed, an increase in wrinkles, fine lines, and bags under your eyes, guess what? You might not just be dealing with the normal signs of stress because of the new year. You might actually have had a decrease in your production of collagen within your body. You might also be noticing that your skin elasticity is a little bit down, your hair's thin, and your skin overall is also thin. This is largely due to the fact that our body slows down its natural collagen production, and one of the things you could do to fight back against it is go over to healthwithjustice.com and get yourself this amazing collagen powder. There are five different types of collagen in here. It will make you look and feel younger, and this amazing formula can be yours risk-free 60-day money-back guarantee for 51% off at healthwithjustice.com. Restore your collagen today, healthwithjustice.com. Marla Christine, her name is Eliciana Valdez, and right now she is struggling with PTSD after she was stabbed by another 13-year-old girl. She fought for her life, and now she is fighting for justice. You're watching a fight caught on cell phone video between two 13-year-olds. Pay close attention to the girl wearing the black jacket. She pulls a knife out of her back pocket and stabs and slashes Eliciana Valdez. So like I said, it was a viral video a few months back. These girls were fighting. I'm not really showing you the video of them fighting, but I'm going to play the audio for you so you can hear what was going on. And in the beginning, it was pretty normal. However, like this local news segment actually brings up, it became abnormal when one of these 13-year-olds actually pulled out a knife and started stabbing at the other girl. Now, it's one thing for kids to be playing with knives. It's one thing if there was a flesh wound here and there, a little bit of stabby stab, because what's that between girls? However, this was a serious stabbing. Multiple organs were punctured, and this 13-year-old girl nearly died. Let's hear some of her reaction. Her mother, Cassandra, who was at the park, couldn't believe her eyes. Are you stabbing my daughter? As Eliciana was on the ground bleeding, her biggest fear was losing her life. Not being able to to ever go out with my family again, not being, not being able to like see another another day. Look, this is heartbreaking stuff. If you're 13 years old, you should not be laying on the floor bleeding out as your mother's screaming out for somebody to stop your attacker and running towards you. But that's what this girl had to go through. And again, this was not minor wounds that this girl was just, oh, worried about and it was no big deal. She required major surgeries in order to deal with the consequences of this premeditated attack. And by the way, I emphasize premeditated because the charge in this case should have been attempted murder. The girl brought the knife, apparently started the fight, pulled out the knife during the course of the fight, and then stabbed her multiple times. When people told her to stop, she kept going, and then she celebrated it later, and believe me, we're going to get into that celebration. She was uh, stabbed uh, three times uh, and slashed once on her left arm. Her um, uh, The puncture wounds uh, punctured her liver, her kidneys, her diaphragm, and her pericardial sac. Those injuries caused internal bleeding. Doctors had to immediately operate on Eliciana. So you hear that? She hit her kidney, hit her liver, 
and ended up puncturing the sac that's around your heart, so she needed emergency heart surgery. She also had internal bleeding. This girl nearly died. And again, even though they're 13-year-olds, this was a serious violent attack. This was a dangerous person that needed to be removed from society, needed some consequences. But unfortunately, the Soros-backed, Sean King-supported, woke, left-wing district attorney Gascon had no interest in punishing this girl for this crime. Attempted murder of a child? No big deal in Los Angeles. Gascon has a solution and everybody should be ashamed of the outcome of this case and of course how much worse it's going to get as I go through this video. For a year and a half leading up to the stabbing, Eliciana says she had been the victim of bullying and stalking by the same girl who attacked her. It's almost like a lifetime movie. The drama was all over a boy. She had this obsession with me because of the boy across the street. She thought we were dating, which we weren't. We were just friends. Now, the motivation for all of this, for this vicious attack, for this premeditated murder, for the year of bullying that led up to this, was, of course, a boy across the street. This girl had a big crush on the boy that was across the street, and this other girl were friends, so therefore they had to make a big thing of it, and she decided that she needed to kill over it. On social media, the girl was relentless, enlisting her friends to also insult Eliciana. She called me ugly, fat, uh, she talked about my grandma, said my grandma's burning in hell, and um, F my dead grandma. It's absurd, it's insane, and it's described as a Lifetime movie, and honestly, it's actually a fitting description. It actually makes sense. This is kind of like a Lifetime movie. After the stabbing, the girl posted this message to music and tagged the boy at the center of this feud. Yeah, that's right. After this attempted murder, the girl in question, and I have to mute the music because of copyright, but you can see the text on your screen, posted this video to the guy asking if he would love her more if she killed someone. This is her celebrating, thinking that she stabbed another 13-year-old to death over the boy that she's interested in. It just makes me think even more that she's crazy, that she needs help like mental health. So listen, I understand that this is the victim. I understand that she's on the local news and she needs to present herself in such a way that makes her seem sympathetic. But here's the thing. Stop talking about helping the perpetrators in these cases. Stop talking about how these knife-wielding maniacs are actually a sad case and they're actually kind of the victim too. Because that kind of attitude is exactly what led the district attorney to charge this case how it was charged. And you're not going to believe this. Let's just play it because you need to see it. The 13-year-old girl was arrested and charged with one misdemeanor count of assault with a deadly weapon and one count of electronic harassment against a minor. Yeah, you heard that right. This girl brings a knife, premeditated action, stabs another girl three times, kidney, liver, heart emergency heart surgery she nearly dies internal bleeding and she gets charged with a cyber bullying statute of a minor which by the way is probably the one charge that you shouldn't have charged her with because obviously she's not an adult so it's weird to charge her with cyber bullying a minor when she's the same age as her and then a misdemeanor assault with a deadly weapon a misdemeanor assault with a deadly weapon Cassandra received this email from the prosecutor stating, We filed appropriate charges on this case, considering George Gascon's new emphasis on restorative justice as guided by the science and data. Yeah, that's right. Gascon's office had the audacity to send this email to the mother saying, Hey, listen, we charged her appropriately. And you know how we know that? Because we followed the science and the data. The science and the data were followed in this instance, not to mention the fact that Gascon cares a lot about restorative justice. So the fact that we charged her with two misdemeanors, which by the way, result in a maximum of under a year in prison. So 364 days would be the maximum sentence that you can get for a misdemeanor in jail, not even in prison. And your daughter's recovery was over a year. So she's probably going to have some lifetime medical problems and all that. Not to mention she has PTSD, not to mention all the other ways that she's traumatized and all the other negative impacts that this event has had on our life. But but don't worry, we charge her appropriately because we have some science and some studies and data. So so don't worry about it. Just relax. Be 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 happy. This is what you got because those were the charges. Can't wait till you hear what the sentence was. The final outcome? Probation for Eliciana's attacker. What were you hoping the punishment would be? Uh, more than probation. Yeah, that's right. Probation. She she got probation. She nearly murdered somebody and got probation. And I'm going to tell you, 
that there's an answer for why she got probation. You're going to hear it, but you're going to have to hold off a little bit because now we're going to talk about the lesson that the mother should have learned from this because she was actually an advocate for these woke criminal justice policies until she actually experienced them. Cassandra is conflicted. She believes in restorative justice, but... As a community activist, I fought with organizations to change the laws. And when I was fighting for these laws to change for these young people, uh, never did we intend for somebody to commit premeditated attempted murder at 13 years old and get completely away with it. Now, look, she was an activist, obviously a wrongheaded, foolhardy activist that actually pushed for this soft on crime legislation, specifically when it came to children. Now, some of you are going to say you get what you advocated for, leftists experiencing their own policies however i think that's incredibly cruel to say to somebody who wasn't victimized by a crime based on a policy that they advocated for but nearly lost their daughter based on policies that she advocated for also and this should be pointed out and i'm okay to point this out because i am half latino myself but when you're a bunch of hispanics and you're all wearing blue that tends to make me think that you're not all wearing blue because you coincidentally happen to be big fans of the Los Angeles Dodgers. It seems like maybe she had some questionable affiliations and even some of those young people in the organization that she was advocating for were probably from a gang-related background. So yeah, she, she kind of messed up. She kind of stumbled and bumbled in her past, and it ended up resulting maybe in an abstract sense because I don't think that this woman actually got the change in policy she might have voted for Gascon, but I don't think she personally got the change in policy. But yeah, she got a taste of a policy that she advocated for in the worst way humanly possible in that her daughter's attempted murderer is out immediately, probation, and the district attorney is actually thumbing his nose at her for daring to question his authority. Get a load of the explanation. We contacted the district attorney's office, which refused an on-camera interview as has been the norm. So of course, like all these progressives, they don't talk to you if if you disagree with them they shut down the debate Gascon did not come on camera to address this because why would he answer to you the plebs the dirty losers out in the world he answers to George Soros Sean King the progressives the left-wing activists not to the citizens and of course he likes to bend the knee to the criminal instead Alex Bastian special advisor to the DA issued the following statement that says in part in this assault case the 13 year old minor had no criminal record this disposition takes into account the safety of the victim and looks to prevent future harm by ensuring the minor also receives treatment. Yeah, that's right. This minor, this 13 year old, the attacker, the one, you know, who attempted murder on camera for the world to see, she never attempted murder before this. So if you think about it, this is only the first time she stabbed a girl over a boy in three vital organs and required that girl to have emergency surgery in order to save her life. If she did it again, then maybe we consider like two more years of probation on top of that because, you know, we have to worry about her status and what we're going to have in terms of impact on her life. And remember, this is only the first time that she brought a knife in a premeditated fashion, went after somebody she was harassing for a year, and then stabbed her in three critical places, nearly killing her. I mean, you know, maybe maybe she does it six more times, then gets gone, might think about maybe charging three misdemeanors ra rather than two misdemeanors. I am livid because that little girl is running around doing whatever she wants scot-free while my baby girl's home suffering from PTSD, you know, afraid to leave the house, constantly looking out of her window. Are you afraid that she could do it again? Yes, I feel like her being on probation isn't enough. This little girl is obviously terrified. She's been through a year-long recovery, has PTSD, is afraid to leave her house, looks out her window because she feels like this girl, who, by the way, knows where she lives, might come back and try to finish the job. But she can take some solace in the fact that DA Gascon said it was only her first-time offense. So she never did it before, so that's why she needed probation. And remember, we got to think about the other victim in this instance, which is the girl who tried to murder you on camera because th that's the other victim because you know she's she's just a minor i mean you were like so much older being the same exact age as her and you know by contrast you got stabbed a bunch of times and she did the stabbing but if you really think about it we gotta have some restorative justice so maybe she'll send you a bouquet of flowers to your funeral and you'll feel like you've been restored cassandra says the 13 year old attacker made a statement that she wasn't done with her daughter understandably that has her extremely worried after she thought she killed her 
She celebrated by sending the boy that video message that we talked about earlier, asking if he would love her more if she killed someone for her, beating the daughter who she thought she killed at that time. You know, she was celebrating that. But then when she found out that this girl survived, this girl that's hiding in her home that lives in the neighborhood, and she only got probation, she decided to say that she wasn't done with her. So she's still threatening this girl, but it's okay. Because according to Gascon, even though she did bully her for a year, even though she did stalk her, even though she did stab her in the heart, you know, in, in the kidney and in the liver, and, you know, she required emergency heart surgery, this is the first time that she threatened to kill her again after the first attempted murder. So, honestly, right now, it's no big deal. Don't worry about it, and don't bother asking Gascon for any kind of explanation, because I don't know if you guys know this. I don't know if you guys are aware of this. I don't know if you guys are feeling this, but that girl is also the victim, too. I mean, she felt very sad when she was forcing that knife into that little girl, and honestly, you should kind of feel sad for her, because there's some possibility that she's, in fact, Aladdin. And honestly, if you really think about it, the real criminal in this case might be poverty. The reason this girl stalked on social media rallied a bunch of her friends to stalk this girl on social media and then went to stab her in a park in a premeditated act of attempted murder is probably because she wanted to get bread for her family. She's kind of like Aladdin in that way. And if you think about it, nobody can fault Aladdin, which makes that boy Jasmine and makes this girl Jafar. Look, what these people have done to our criminal justice system is absolutely horrific. And if you want to be sympathetic to somebody, stop turning the perpetrator into the victim and be sympathetic to the 13-year-old girl who's afraid to leave her house because some other girl stabbed her randomly. And I know a lot of you might have gotten on board with some of these ideas because you were well-meaning. Think about how the mother felt when she actually had to live with the policies that she advocated for in what I'm sure was a well-meaning and genuine way. There are real consequences to this. There are real consequences to losing sight of the fact that perpetrators, predators, are the ones that we should show disdain for, not law enforcement, not freaking everyday people that just want to live under peace. This idea that we're going to have some kind of restorative justice when this girl is still threatening her, and by the way, how is that not a violation of the probation? You should have been charged with attempted murder. The girl you try to murder is still afraid of you and you're still threatening her and somehow that's totally fine for gets gone because i don't know if you know this first time offense no big deal it's only her first probation violation where she threatened to commit the same crime again no big deal don't worry about it keep voting for her guest gone and don't worry if you try to do a recall all of a sudden they're gonna care about signature matches and block that petition anyway that's all i really have for you guys today thank you so much for watching if you liked the video show by leaving a like subscribe for more content follow me on all my social media support me via the support links in the description box of this video this has been me talking about an insane story but an even more insane criminal justice system till next time